Now it is time to show you some gameplay of Braindance. This is a feature that you'll experience when you play Cyberpunk 2077. Braindance is essentially a recording of somebody else's experience. It allows you to relive their sense of sight, smell, touch, and even hearing, all thanks to a special device. After the gameplay, I will be welcoming back Pavel Sasko. I will also be joined by Patrick Mills, our senior quest designer and all-round lore master, who will be helping to answer your questions and give you some explanation on how you'll be interacting with Braindance when you play Cyberpunk 2077. So, let's take a look. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. And remember, everything on full blast. They'll spot us extra for a wicked adrenaline high. Okay, on you go. Down, everybody, on the ground. I want to see you kissing the flooring. Money, now, or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God. Well, yeah, hey, I, 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 now, before I blow your fucking head off! Ah! Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. That was too much. I felt... I could feel the guy's pain, his dress, his hope. Hope wrapped up in something else. Mm-hmm. Probably took a booster just before. You'll be fine. Got everything set up? Let's switch over to editing mode. I'll sever the link to the BD Roller's sensory array. You'll be able to look around freely. Whole scene's yours. Full cam control in analysis mode, so move around, zoom in and out, whatever else you come up with. Think of it as your own little sandbox. So, analysis mode, you control playback. Can even pause when you feel the need. Then you use the editor console to unpause. Try it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out, and we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. Dream as hell, right? Well, that's not all. You can speed things up or rewind, whatever you like. Give it a try. Rewind. Roll it back to the top. Can I, can I? All good. Neat. Now try fast-forwarding a bit. Plan simple. Do nothing on it. Don't be creative. Okay. You can also reset the recording. That'll take you right back to the beginning. Try it. Now for some fun. This here's why you came in the first place. In analysis mode, you get to view and even scan details of the enviro recorded by the BD roller. Focus on the heat. The gun this gonk gets from his buddy at the beginning. Now scan it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. Okay, right here. Excellent. Let's move on. Now heads up. In analysis mode, you can ferret out background noise and conversations if the roller got close enough. This tech records everything, every little detail, even the sights and sounds the roller was never aware of. To see the sources of the recorded sensory signals, switch to the audio layer in the editor. Go ahead and try that now. Okay, good. Now you should see several sound signatures in the store. Choose one and hone in on it. Pack of six, case of brosif, and a couple of zappers. Okay. We have a deal today on two flavors, Cuddy and yeah, Serpentine. Everybody! On the... So, any thoughts? Unbelievable. Seriously. Like what's happening right next to me. Yeah, it's how BD recording implants work. They pick up everything, all the elements in the background. Then an editor tweaks them. 
make some pop. Keep playing with the sound, explore it a bit. We'll move on when you get bored. Ah, what a sheer kiss in the flooring! Muddy! Mess. Sometimes you can analyze extra layers in the raw. Stuff the rollers cyberware picked up. Like what? Ev's got Kiroshi optics that grab infrared. Meaning you should be able to grab heat signatures from her recording. Huh. <laughs> Hello nice. Scanning works on peeps, too. Walk up to the wounded chick. Try scanning her. All right, next thing. Scroll forward to the part where our artist gets a lead injection. Oh, or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, get it, no! Fucking head off! See that? They shot him and he never saw it coming. But you will. Here it comes. My favorite part of the game. See the blinking thing over the entrance? Surveillance cam. Must have caught our shooter. You'll see in a sec. Cam feeds to the screen behind the clerk. Roll back to where the screen's in the kid's field of vision. Then scan it. His own chumba shot him. Probably planned to all along. Must have got a nice slice of cred on the black market for a BD like this. BD freaks are ready to pay a preem for a real flatline. Anyway, if you've seen enough, you can exit. Yeah, it's impressive, right? It's too bad most of the BDs we do here are only good for flogging the law. So Braindance is a pretty big part of the cyberpunk universe. It's not just something used for adult films. There is an awful lot to it. And there's two sides I'd really like you guys to help me explore. First is the lore. So how this actually fits into the universe. And then there's the gameplay side. So how players will be interacting with it. So Patrick, could you tell us more about the lore of Braindance? I would love to. Uh, so in the world of Cyberpunk 2077, Braindance was invented way back in the early 2000s at UC Santa Cruz. It was developed as a way of recording a person's experiences and then playing them back for someone else as, so that they could relive them as though it was happening to them. It was originally used for things like therapy and prisoner rehabilitation, but by 2077 it's become this global media industry, including things like movies, mass, mass entertainment, things like that, video games, some interactive things and of course adult fair as well. Now in our game we deal a lot with black brain dances or XBDs as we call them and there are different types of those but the one that you saw in the trailer just there was a flatliner. Now that's where the person recording it actually died find uh, the thrill but a mercenary can also use them for various things, and you'll see that in the game, of course. And from the gameplay perspective, we have been working a lot throughout last years trying to figure out the best way how to use the brain dance in the game as a mechanics. So what we have settled on is this brain dance editor mode. As a player, you will be able to run the brain dance in the editor mode and see different clues that have been registered on the peripheral of given actor. Now, as a player, you can slide on the timeline of the recording back and forth, trying to uncover different clues. And that clues are actually telling a story in the game. So as a player, you will run different investigations that will lead you to uh, different mysteries and you will uncover them actually using that brain dance as a mechanics in the game. So as Pavel was saying, we use brain dance as a storytelling tool. It's not a collectible, it's not something where you're gonna go in and you're gonna play it and you're gonna be like, ah, I've seen this before. What we use brain dance for is to give you a keyhole into the life of the residents of Night City. And we can explore things like childhood trauma, religion, various philosophical ideas in a way that you might not otherwise experience in a story about a mercenary on the tough streets. So we've tried to talk about some of the aspects that we think the community will find really exciting, but you know, while you're both here, I'd love to know what is it about cyberpunk that you guys are really excited for? Uh, Patrick, why don't you start? 
So one of the things that I'm most excited about in this game is the characters and the way they interact with the world. We've got this really interesting world that stretches all the way back to the Cyberpunk 2020 source material and all of these events and all of those things, but those don't mean anything unless they connect with characters. And so when we come up with a character, we start with their function. What is this person? What do they do in the story? But we don't stop there. We go back and we figure out what was their childhood like? What was their upbringing like? What kind of obstacles did they face in this harsh reality? And did they overcome them? And how did they overcome them? Or did they not overcome them? And why? And you can see all of those things in their environment, in their dialogues, in sort of how they operate in the world. And we come up with that for all of our characters. Now you look at someone like Victor Vector, and you're gonna see stories about his past in his environment and in his dialogue. You know, we come up with that stuff even if we don't use it in the game because it helps inform us as to who these characters are. And uh, for me, I, I would not be myself if I would not say that I'm the most excited about our quests. Like with our Witcher 3 team, with, with Patrick and like everybody that has stayed with us since the Witcher 3 time, we really have grown so much. Uh, we have learned so much and we have used all that experience to put them into the quest that we have made and you will not find really a, a filler in this game like everything has a meaning like we put so much effort into making sure that everything is rewarding is interesting is talking about characters as patrick said it's talking about worlds it's talking about emotions like touching the player in a really like a real way um and i just can't wait to find out what you think Pavel, I know you mentioned story and, and quests and writing quests. And when I was last in the studio, I had a look and I saw a notebook on your desk. And I would love for you to show everybody this notebook. <laughs> okay, Holly, I mean, you asked for it. So um, this is uh, my notebook. It says uh, Salsa Quest Designer. Uh, the reason is because I dance salsa and I'm a quest designer. So, you know, <laughs> so, so I wrote, started this notebook actually when we were really starting Cyberpunk. At the very beginning, I wrote the, like a first note and it says pretty much something around, along the lines of a, that we were starting with a prototype. And then, you know, I kept on uh, basically noting things that we've been working on um, for like next years. I remember once when our concept artists actually approached me and they said that they want to take a look on my notebook. I was like, what for actually? And they, they, they took some pictures um, and they told me, uh, yeah, well, you know, because we are looking for a reference material for a, a notes of a psychopathic killer. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, well, uh, you may um, find maybe some of my notes um, in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Pavel and Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. I'm pretty lucky because I have read some of the stories that you and the team have written for Braindance, and I'm pretty excited for people to discover them. But uh, before we do finish today's episode, there is just one more thing we'd like to talk about. Earlier in this episode, I mentioned that media have been getting hands-on with the opening of Cyberpunk 2077, and they should be posting their impressions right about now. And if you missed anything from today's episode, don't worry, we'll be uploading everything to our channels very soon. And finally, on behalf of everybody at CD Projekt Red, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us for this very first episode